to worship at College United Methodist Church here in Philomath, Oregon. We are continuing to broadcast our worship services every Sunday morning. Now we post these services early on Sunday and you can access them at any time after that from our Facebook page or right here on our YouTube channel. Well, here we are ready to start a new year. We've been doing some form of online worship since July of 2019. But since the middle of March last year, we've been online only because of the pandemic. As the vaccine becomes more available, we will hopefully reach a point where it is safe to return to our sanctuary for in-person worship. But even when that happens, we still plan to record worship and make it available right here on Facebook and YouTube. And like we were doing before all this started, we plan to be able to live stream our worship services on Sunday morning. But until then... We will continue to post worship every Sunday morning, and I want to encourage you to look around our YouTube channel as well as our Facebook page. Uh, you can subscribe on our YouTube channel and get informed when we post something because it's not just worship services that we have on our YouTube channel. We've got Bible studies and uh, even short lessons on United Methodist history and the theology. I want to let you know how much we appreciate having this opportunity to have a time of worship with you. We hope that your time spent in worship here with us is fulfilling, and we hope that it helps draw you closer to God. Once again, I want to remind you that you can make designated gifts as well as your regular donation on our webpage by clicking on the Donations tab. And you can always mail your donation to the church at Post Office Box 670 in Philomath. Well, we're going to have a great time in worship this morning. Let us begin with prayer. Into your presence we come, Father, as your children have done throughout the centuries. In vast cathedrals, parish churches, chapels, homes, warehouses, converted cinemas, in crowded spaces, in lonely, isolated places, and now virtually alone or gathered together with others. Your church is wherever your people meet together in worship, in fellowship, and in prayer. So, Father, we ask that you would guide our worship this day so that we will remember that we will be generous with each other as you are always with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
first scripture for today is Jeremiah 31, 7-14, New Revised Standard Version. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will walk them by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. And they shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Bow with me as we go before the altar of God in prayer. God of mystery and love, help us move from the sweet experience of the birth of the Christ child into the reality of the powerful witness of Jesus, who will be Messiah for us all. Remind us again that this season is not about bows and boxes, feasts and family. It is about preparing us, your people, for a mission and a ministry of hope and peace for this aching and angry world. Empower us to be people of great faith, placing our trust in you, believing that peace is not only possible, but it truly will happen if we will work with you and with each other. Father, we bring to you our concerns for those near and dear to us. Remind us that you hear our prayers, and that you respond with love to each one. So, Father, we pray for those whose names are on our hearts this morning. 
Let us be in prayer with one another, for one another, for our church and our community, for our nation, for our world, for all earth's peoples and creatures, that we may be those who promote peace. Give us courage and strength. Help us to reach across areas that divide, offering compassionate assistance wherever it is needed. Bless each one of us in your service, for we ask this in the name of him whose birth we celebrate, even the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our second scripture this morning is going to come from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I'm going to begin in chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. May God add his blessing to this reading from his holy word that we might understand its meaning, that we might live out its purpose. There are some scriptures that need to be savored, to be read slowly almost tediously as each word is wrung from every ounce of meaning and depth. This is not one of those scriptures. The beginning of Ephesians is designed to be read quickly. It's designed to be read breathlessly as you get caught up in the emotion and the spirit of the words. This is a passage that's meant to be felt more than intellectually understood. It's to be poured out over the hearers like a, a fountain that bubbles and foams and lightens the heart. Indeed, when Paul or a ghost writer, or a later disciple trying to capture the essence of Paul, whoever wrote these words, the fact is we really aren't sure in this book. But when this writer wrote this, it was obviously written to be read aloud without hesitation and without pause. This whole text that I read in Greek is one sentence. Clause after clause pours forth as though ideas and thoughts and emotions were weaving together almost on their own as the words were captured like a, a flock of butterflies in a net. When they were written, or dictated or, or dreamed, they brought with them such hope and such joy that it must be experienced before it can be deeply understood. Now, I'm not going to say there isn't anything worth wrestling with intellectually in these verses, 
There is certainly wisdom to be found here. And time should be spent digging deep into the themes and the promises and hopes tucked away behind these lines of Scripture that I just read. It's just that you can't move toward understanding, full understanding, until you enter into the spirit of how it was written. The text is a song that has to be sung before it can be examined. It is first a song of blessing. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. It is praise to the source of the blessing. It is an acknowledgement of the blessings that have poured down over us. Yes, the church, the chosen, the children of God. The text is like a old Jewish liturgy. The formal language of blessing of God that is common in Jewish worship and prayer. Paul presents us a liturgy, an act of worship as we read these first verses. And what is remarkable about the scripture is that it is holy, God-directed, God-inspired, and God-created. It invites us to explore all of the blessings that God has placed in us. It celebrates the God who is at work in us and around us. We are blessed we are chosen, we are destined for adoption, redeemed, forgiven, lavished with grace, taught the mystery, given an inheritance so that we might live in continual praise of God. It's about living a life of praise, of celebration for what God has done for us and for what he is doing in us. We're wrapping up Christmas this week. Some may have already packed everything away. Others may still be sitting in the glow of the lights and the tinsel. But the goal shouldn't be to just pack it all up and put it back in the garage or the attic, but rather to embrace the fullness of the community that we have become, incorporating the new, but remaining all one in Christ. Paul tells us that the gift we have received, the gift of new life, is so that we might live to praise God. That's what this worship experience is about, praising God. Well, well, of course, every worship experience is praising God. But this week, praise is at the beginning and at the end. And in the heart is the call to praise, to a life of praising God. This is what the celebration means, living this life of praise. But now, now our circle is wider than it was because the company who was coming has come and has stayed. Maybe that company includes neighbors. Maybe that company includes new people that have started to watch this broadcast on a somewhat regular basis now that we don't even know about. But certainly the company is the renewed spirit of Jesus who dwells among us in somehow a new and dynamic way. That is why we need to be careful and not talk about, oh, I'll be glad when things return to normal. 
we aren't ever returning to normal because we are going forward. We are embracing the new thing that God is doing in our midst. We celebrate the new community that we have become, even if it is the same people. We are renewed and revived by our attention to the Advent and the Christmas season. We didn't endure all that went before. We were transformed by it. Now it's worth dwelling on a few things. This amazing list of blessings that Paul has talked about. You can choose which ones speak to you most deeply as you seek to live the celebration with the company who have come. But I want to invite you to consider just a few. First, I invite you to consider reconciliation. In the fullness of time, writes Paul, God will gather all things up. This has the meaning of unifying, making one under a single leadership, and that leader is God. In 2 Corinthians, Paul tells us that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. Paul told the Corinthians that God reconciled himself to them through Jesus and has given them the ministry of reconciliation and he expects them to be ambassadors of Christ to a hurting world. Now, if you lay that alongside what we read this morning, we now know that we are working God's purposes out when we are in the business of reconciliation, making one united as one in Christ. Above all else, we know that it is our calling and our joy to bind together, to bring together the things of heaven and the things of earth, or as Jesus puts it, to love God with all our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Reconciliation. The second word that could stand some reflection is believe. The writer of Ephesians concludes this part of the letter by saying, Remember how this worked? Remember how you came to faith? You heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and you believed in him, and you were sealed by the Holy Spirit. You believed in him. And too often we've reduced this word belief to just a word. You made an intellectual decision to follow Jesus. You agreed with an argument. You accepted a fact or, or a truth. But this truth is not just alongside the thousand other things you believe that you've picked up from living in this world. This is so much more. This belief. There's a weight to this word that many of us have lost. What the writer argues here is that when you heard this word, when someone brought you this story, when someone handed Jesus to you like a gift from above, you changed everything about who you are and what you are. You put your life in the hands of Jesus. You secured your future to his grace. You wrapped yourself around him like he was now the air that you breathe and the bread that sustains you. 
So now if you really meant it when you said, I believe, you cannot be satisfied with an intellectual nod of the head to some cliche about salvation. Because it is our salvation that defines who we are. That is our entire reason for being. That is the summation of our very existence. We conclude our Christmas season with this idea that we are called to live our faith and not just accept our faith. Think about it. We should not just say, man, that was one weird Christmas as we put away all the decorations. But we have to decide to live what we fully and wholeheartedly believe. Jesus has come and we've opened our doors to the wider community because we are called to gather all things together in reconciliation as a precursor to the greater gathering that will be done when Jesus returns. We must now live each day in celebration of that mystery and that hope that has been given to us. We've been saying throughout this Advent season that company is coming. Well, company is here and he's staying. And now it is up to you to decide if you're going to just go back to the way things were and try and get back to normal. Or if this is the year that you're going to live the way that you say you believe. Because the most important thing you will ever do in your life is decide what your response is going to be to God sending Jesus down to you. To save your soul. To give you eternal life. To give you life abundant. What are you going to do about that? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
going to invite you to share together in Holy Communion. You may want to have some bread and some juice or water available if you want to participate in this part of the service. If you don't have those items, you're welcome to pause the video while you gather them together. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to them. And he said, this is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you and for many for the resolution of your sins. Paul said, as often as ye eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here this day and on these gifts of bread and wine. May they be for us the body and blood of Jesus the Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with you one in spirit with each other and one in communion with all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All power, all honor, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
Have you looked around lately? The brokenness, the division, the hate. After a while, it begins to take a toll. We begin to view people differently. Servanthood gives way to skepticism. Faith transforms into fear. Love begins to languish under the weight of uncertainty. It's easy to become who we were never meant to be. Cynical, angry, lost. In moments like this, we're reminded of the lasting meaning of Christmas. A savior given to bear the weight of our sin, to mend our brokenness, to make whole our divisions. The love of God on full display, bringing light to the darkness, giving hope to the hopeless. This Christmas, in the midst of these difficult times, may we all remember just how desperately we still need a savior. Once again, we are excited that you chose to worship with us today. And we hope that you've been blessed with his presence in the music and in hearing from the Word of God. As always, be sure and contact us here at the church if you have a prayer request or any other need that you might have. We would be happy to hear from you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And remember that God loves you and Jesus is right here with us through it all. Let us encourage one another in the slow and long labors of love. Through honest witness to loss, to bearing together through grief, to remembering what still can become, let us press on in the work of drawing God's future near. Never alone. Never without hope. The Spirit sends us with peace. Mm -hmm.